This short video summarizes our approach to using ESP blocks in scoliosis correction surgery. It goes without saying that this is a very painful procedure with moderate to severe pain scores lasting up to several days. I favor a comprehensive multimodal anesthetic and analgesic approach wherever possible, incorporating as many of these elements as possible for their additive and synergistic benefits. The component of regional anesthesia has been difficult to implement in spine surgery until now. Here is an example of what can be achieved with the approach I'm about to describe. Just uh, bend those knees for me. Good. And lift them up off the bed. Good. Good. Yep. Can you lift them any higher? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. And the other side? Great. And does that make it sore at all? No? Like a one or, or just nothing? Zero. Like zero? Okay. The block may be performed before induction of general anesthesia or after. I prefer, if possible, to do it before, in the block room. The main reason for this has to do with onset time. Pre-induction blocks allow for a 45 to 60 minute interval before incision. And this allows for a good block to develop even with quarter percent bupivacaine. To achieve the same effect with a post-induction block where the interval is only 20 to 30 minutes, I use a mixture of 2% lidocaine and 0.5% bupivacaine. Blocks may be done in the prone or sitting position as preferred. Each have their pros and cons. I recommend using a non-active fluid to locate the right plane so as to avoid wastage of local anesthetic and to minimize the risk of overdosing. For the same reasons, I generally use up to four injections and 80 milliliters in total, adjusting the volume and concentration for patient weight. The target level is based on the planned surgery and bilateral bilevel blocks are done for extensive incisions. In severe scoliosis, it helps to review the imaging and to palpate the spinous processes. This determines the scoliotic curve, which in turn helps probe placement and interpretation of ultrasound images. To date, neither the ESP blocks or the multimodal anesthetic drugs that we use have affected our ability to perform neuromonitoring throughout the case. Remember that the ESP blocks are just one part of the whole puzzle a comprehensive, multimodal, perioperative, anesthetic, and analgesic approach will produce the best results. Thanks for watching.